The challenge for the, the Prime Minister, so you got some of those MPs saying we've got to look at negative gearing, capital gains tax exemptions and so on. As part of the suite of housing response, Anthony Albanese rejected that very quickly today. So he might have that pressure on one side of the party, but he remembers what happened with the shortened period not that long ago. Absolutely, because, you know, the pressures that the Prime Minister are un is under in relation to those issues is that he did extremely well at the last election by persuading Middle Australia that he was on their side. Um, I know he didn't get a huge vote, but if you look at the polling that has happened since then, he's increasing his support amongst middle, that middle Australia um, part of the population. Now, when you start talking about negative gearing, and negative gearing, people seem to think that negative gearing is the, you know, the, the, the gift to the rich. There are a lot of people out there who are not extremely wealthy who decide that they're going to negative gear a property because that helps them guarantee their retirement. So you're talking about a very broad group of Australians, not just the wealthy who are going to be affected by that. Once you start talking about changing the capital gains rules, same group of people are affected. And to be fair, when you're talking about capping rents, again, you're affecting that same group of people. So the Prime Minister has to work out how we can keep those people on side, as he's managed to do so far, and also keep on side the people within his own party who want much, much, much more radical reform. It's a very del delicate balancing act. That is, Ben, uh, you know, one element of the party wants to revisit some of those issues. Prime Minister Albanese, more pragmatic than many people would uh, might have thought before his election, he wants to win another term in office. Yeah, but we're now moving beyond the first year of the government, the first year where they spent delivering their promises methodically and setting up a reputation of doing what they said they were going to do. But it's not surprising as we move beyond that that you have a, an activist backbench wanting more. One, because they're, they're talented and they want to do things and they want to change the country for the better. But two, um, we're no longer dealing with the situation and the economy and society exactly like it was when uh, Anthony Albanese was elected in, in May. The, the housing issue, uh, while big then, has got bigger and has shown no, no signs yeah. of uh, getting fixed. So I think you'll see more of it. That's a good thing. Um, uh, one thing you've got to say, though, is that Labor and the Greens and the crossbench are debating what to do about housing and how to, and how to fix it. And, I don't think those kind of simplistic solutions that were offered by Scott Morrison, that Labor dixed about accessing superannuation that most people just said would, you know, lift prices and, you know, not actually do anything with um, supplying more affordable or housing, uh, are cutting it. And the, and the coalition's kind of out of the debate. And I do think this kind of push for Labor to do more is going to be a feature of the next uh, two years of their government leading up to the next election.